Hi there, it's Annabelle Beckwith here, working from home, as you see, like uh, most of you, I'm guessing. What I wanted to, um, to, to share with you today is a group coaching methodology, action learning sets. And the reason why I'm wanting to do this is because obviously there's a lot of people wanting to be helpful online, wanting to be supportive of colleagues in, within their own business and within the business community, peers within the business community. Um, and uh, sometimes it's difficult to, A, it's difficult to do that, and B, it's difficult to stay connected. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of really, really helpful threads that I've seen here in LinkedIn, um, which are incredibly supportive, which are offering encouragement and so on. And yet sometimes it can feel like these things are a little remote. So what I want to um, talk you through here is a method of group coaching where you and a group of trusted colleagues, peers, whatever, can, can actually help each other in a really, really practical way through focused and structured group discussions. So the methodology is called action learning and it's useful, obviously, not just in situations like this, it's useful, useful anyway. So the first thing to do is to um, self-organise, pull together a group of about six or seven people um, not everybody is going to be able to, to meet on every call that you schedule, for example. So six or seven is probably quite a good, uh, quite a good number. Um, and let's imagine that you're all gathered in a virtual space on Zoom, on Skype or whatever it happens to be. So this is how the structured coaching conversation works. And it does need to work in this way um, so that it doesn't just become a, a chat um, with, with no outcomes, with no action orientated outcomes. It's, it's focused, it's really focused and it leads to action. Okay, so the first thing is that one person from that group, person A, volunteers to be the issue holder. Okay, so everybody's focus is now on the issue holder. Key point number one. What that person does, first of all, is that they explain their current challenge and the context of their, uh, of their current situation. Now, the more specific they can be, the better. Um, focus on, you know, if you catastrophize and focus on absolutely everything, that's going to be quite difficult for your peers and your colleagues to help you with within the context of a conversation. If it's something that's reasonably specific, then... Um, then that's helpful. It can be anything. It could be about your family, it could be about your business, it could be about your own mindset, anything at all. Key point is step number one, the issue holder outlines what their challenge is and what they want help with. So that should take about five minutes or so. We don't need a really lengthy life story here. The second thing is for another five minutes or so, the rest of the group ask questions from the from person A, from the issues holder, issue holder, but only to establish their understanding of the context. You're not coaching, you're not saying, oh, you tried this, you're not coming up with ideas just yet. You are purely asking questions to understand their context. Now, monitor each other. It might be useful if one person has a little note of these kind of rules, these, these, this, this structure to one side, so they can say, oh, hang on a minute, that's, we just need to establish the context now. Keep yourselves on track, otherwise it will go everywhere. So, step one, issue holder explains their issue. Step two, Everybody asks questions to establish uh, the issue holder's context and to make sure that they know what is really going on for them. Now, the third stage is where you might spend 20, 25 minutes and everybody is helping the issue holder with their issue. Now, I cannot stress this strongly enough. It is absolutely critical that everybody remains focused on the issue holder. It's very tempting to go, oh, me too. Oh, me too. Isn't it awful? And, I'm and suddenly we're not focused on the issue holder anymore. We're talking about me. That's not what's supposed to happen. Other people will have an opportunity to be the issues holder, but this will this will only work if you stay focused on their issue. So again, um, monitor one another, hold yourselves to account and make sure that that's, that that's what you do. Now, when you're helping that issue holder, there's a few methods that you might be able to use. One is to use a traditional coaching approach following a Sir John Whitmore coaching where you're following the GROW model. What's that person's goals? What's their current reality? You will have explored a little bit of these in the introductory questions anyway. What are their options? And you then brainstorm some options with them. Um, what's the first step? What's the way forward? Um, so that could be a general brainstorming session following the GROW method. Another one is where actually the issue holder remains silent. They don't contribute to the conversation, but everybody goes around the group and says, if I was issue holder, if I was Jim, I would blah, blah, blah. 
and everyone's giving a piece of advice. Well, if I were you, I would rethink the whole thing. If I were you, I would look over here. If I... Now, keep going round until people sort of run dry of ideas, basically. Um, the idea there is that, again, the issue holder isn't necessarily taking part in the conversation. They are listening really carefully to what is going on. It can be a challenge for the issue holder not to butt in and go, oh, yes, but... That's not what's happening. We, we want them to just listen at this point because there may be something that, that occurs to them in, in that silence when they're sitting there listening. The third method, just to quickly share with you now, is the gossip method. And this is also quite, um, quite an interesting one because, again, this is where the issue holder, if you're sitting in a circle, you, you would actually get the issue holder to turn their back on the circle. Their back is to the circle and they're still listening. Here, of course, you can just make sure, right, I'm going to be on mute as the issue holder. Everybody else gossips about them. And it could be, well, if you ask me, Jim is just, Jim's just losing the plot. I mean, what on earth does he think? He ought to be doing this, not that. Well, I think Jim ought to just man up. Do you know what? He's got a lot more going for him than he realises. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be sort of catty remarks like that or expressed in that tone of voice. But the key thing is people are talking about the issue holder. And the issue holder is not to interrupt and start a conversation. They just listen. OK, so there's three different things that you can you can try. If you want to just have a sort of a group discussion where everyone is, is just using a variety of different means to help that person, then that's all, uh, that's good as well. If you want to share your experience and say, right, I had something similar to this um, in the, the crash of 2008, then that's fine. But make sure you're not talking about you. You are absolutely focused on the issue holders challenge and in helping them. So once you've gone through that third stage where you are uh, helping the issue holder with their challenge, at the end of that, the issue holder gives some feedback and they might say, well, actually, Jemima came up with a terrific idea. I'm going to do that. Or, well, this made me think about they might come back and say, well, actually, it was nothing that any of you said, but it really made me think about something else. The issue holder says what they heard. And crucially, the issue holder commits to taking some sort of action, whatever that might be. And the final step is once that person's agreed on the action, you move on to another issue holder. You go through the same process again for about 25, 30 minutes or so. Somebody else is in the hot seat. Somebody else is the issue holder. Um, once you've done that, uh, however many times you feel that you have time for, then you arrange to have a further conversation. And in that follow up conversation, the first thing that happens there is that you would go back to person A, the issue holder, and say, you said that you were going to think about this. You were going to do that. What, what happened? So you're holding one another to account as well. So just to go through that methodology, which is really, really practical, it really connects people. It, it makes sure that you're not stuck in your own head and it's not groupthink, but you're, you're leveraging the skills and the knowledge and the experience and indeed the goodwill of other people. Just to go through that again. One, somebody elects to be the issue holder and they briefly outline the thing that they want help with. Two, for about five minutes, the group asks questions just to make sure they understand the issue holder's challenge. Three, you use a variety of different methods to help the issue holder and the issue holder remains the focus all the time. Four, at the end of that, the issue holder then commits to taking action and then you move on to another issue holder. And five, when you next reconvene your conversation, you check in with the issue holder to say, how did it go? It's a really, really helpful method for group coaching, action learning sets. Please take every opportunity to organise yourself into trusted groups of peers within the business community and to use this to everybody's advantage. Thank you. I'm Annabelle Beckwith. I hope this has been useful.